Thank you. It's great to be here. Uh, my name is uh, Anders Hultman, and I'm the uh, CEO of Arocell. Uh, we are listed on NASDAQ First North, uh, and this is our disclaimer. Uh, we are active in the diagnostic segment, uh, and for you who are not familiar with diagnostics, it's basically the third imperative of the therapeutics and vaccines, all with the aim of reducing uh, disease burden. Uh, a good diagnostic tool provides valuable information uh, at every step of the way while you're treating the patient, all the way from diagnosis to monitoring, screening and prognosis. Uh, Arocell is a Swedish diagnostic company with a global outreach. Uh, we have a broad product portfolio of CMR products, which we're currently selling <coughs> in Europe, Asia and Africa. Uh, and we have them on a very, very two different platforms. Our tests are divided into two uh, areas. It's oncology test and infectious disease. Uh, the aim of the test is, of course, to, have to help hospitals and clinics to provide the best possible care to the patients. And for about a year ago, we acquired IDL Biotech. And <coughs> I consider this the starting point of what I would call the new RSL. Uh, with IDL in our portfolio, uh, we have more than 30 years of experience of putting product on the market. Uh, we are also fully fledged. Uh, Diagnostic company. We have everything from research and development, sales and marketing, in house manufacturing, uh, regulatory competence. So we have everything in place. Uh, we also have a good network of commercial partners, which enables us to sell this product on sort of a global scale, although we're a quite little company. Uh, apart from the sales of our existing products, we also have a clinical development program uh, with the aim of securing the long-term growth of RSL uh, and to secure market approval on, on prioritized markets going forward. Looking at the IVD markets as a whole, we can see that it's uh, growing at about twice the face, pace of the pharmaceutical industry. Uh, we are focused on the oncology side. We're focusing right now mainly on the bladder cancer sector with our UBC rapid test. The main drivers uh, for the growth in this market is, of course, the increased elderly population, uh, which increases the prevalence of chronic disease. It's also uh, still a backlog from the pandemic, uh, in which uh, diagnostic tools play, play an important role to reduce this, this backlog. Also, uh, the occurrence of new advanced IVD tests increases the focus and interest in the market segment. Uh, looking at our product specifically, as I said, the aim is to help hospital and clinics to provide the best possible care to patients. And uh, we can do that by providing early detection of either tumors or an infection. We can monitor uh, the progression of a disease while the while the patient is being treated. Uh, we can also, after treatment, uh, detect the reoccurrence of the disease. Uh, and the common denominator for our cells products is that they are non-invasive. A simple blood test or a urine sample is enough to provide the information that we need. All our tests are easy to perform. Uh, our rapid test, you will get a result within 10 to 15 minutes. You will get the result while you're still sitting uh, at the doctor's office. If you look at our ELISA lab tests, quite simple tests, but they can be performed in any lab in the world. Uh, and all of our tests are cost effective. That means that it's the cost is not the hindrance for them to reach the patients. Uh, our products uh, are divided into three main categories. Uh, we have on the tumor, on the oncology side, we have two main biomarkers that we're working with, and that's the thymidine kinase 1 and the cytokeratins. Our main product within the oncology segment is, as I said before, uh, our UBC rapid test. Uh, we're selling that currently in, in mainly in Europe, uh, but also in other parts of the world. Our main market is Germany, and we've seen a continuous growth in this market for some time now. Uh, 
looking at uh, our third category of the uh, infectious disease part, we have a, a typhoid tests, the Tubex TF and Tubex WASH, uh, which is, uh, detects typhoid fever, obviously. Uh, the target market there is emerging markets, and our main market right now is Indonesia. And there we've seen an, a really uh, impressive growth the, the lot this year. Uh, and uh, also Indonesia as such is a very interesting market. It's uh, more than 270 million inhabitants, and we have a, a very, good, uh, very good partners in that country. Looking at the figures for the last year, as you can see, the UBC rapid test has seen a stable growth, uh, almost since 2018, actually. We saw a little dip here in the, during the pandemic, uh, but this is, uh, has continued after this dip and is still continuing. Uh, and we're also enhancing the UBC rapid product by adding a new reader, which will also open new markets uh, for the UBC rapid product. Looking at the uh, Tubex, the typhoid fever product, we saw a little longer dip there in, <coughs> during the pandemic. We had, a, had, a, had a, uh, both 2020 and 2021, uh, we had a, a downturn in turnover. But this has, all of this has we, we recovered this year and we've increased even further. And I must emphasize here that we, if you're looking at our order stock or order backlog, it's looking very positive going forward as well. Uh, when it comes to future product development, as I said, on the oncology side, we're focusing on two tumor markers. Right now, we are having those tumor markers, looking at them, only having one tumor, mar tumor marker per test. Uh, but the idea is to combine these two tumor markers into a combined test. Uh, and by doing so, we can look to, at the patient samples from two angles, both from the TK1 angle and from the cytokeratin angle. This will enable us, we hope, uh, to get the more, even more precise tests. And this is something that we're going to, this is a project that's ongoing, and we're going to run the first clinical studies on this in the beginning of next year. Uh, if you look how we structure our sales, we have a structure in basically three, three sections to mirror the different market segments that we, uh, we focus on. Our rapid tests uh, are focused on clinics and local laboratories. Uh, the manual laboratory tests are labs and hospitals, research pharma. And the third part is automatized uh, closed platforms. And it's basically <coughs> in this segment that most of the diagnosis tests are run today, or yeah, in vitro diagnosis tests are run today. Uh, and this is, uh, I'm very happy to say, that we're going to put up, launch our first biomarker on one of these platforms in China uh, by the end of this year. So this is the first step uh, in the plan to put all of our biomarkers on uh, these automated platforms. Uh, we are not limiting ourselves to only one partner or only China for that. We, we are working in parallel with several partners, and the goal is to, to have, as I said, our entire portfolio on these platforms uh, and, and also make it possible to reach as many patients as possible. Uh, last week, we had a strategy update uh, where we informed about the progress that we made since we set our updated strategy, which is based on a five-point program. Uh, you can read more about that program on our webpage, rsl.com. Uh, <coughs> these are the four basic uh, takeaways from that uh, strategy update, basically. Uh, we're seeing a really strong organic sales growth right now, actually much faster than we anticipated. Uh, and this is actually the result of us focusing, putting additional resources into sales and focusing on our existing product portfolio. In combination with also working closely to our strategic sales partners. Uh, and as I said, this has given results faster than we expected. Uh, this has also, of course, helped us uh, in our plan to become uh, cash flow positive in the operational activities. And we are uh, on our way to, to reach that goal. Uh, but you know, uh, we have also, apart from working on the income side or the revenue side, we also, of course, have worked on, on uh, streamlining the organization. As I said, we acquired IDL for a, bit, a little bit more than a year ago. Uh, we have secured that the synergies with these two companies has, has been realized. Uh, we still have a little bit more to do, but the majority has been realized. Uh, and uh, we're also uh, basically optimizing the organization in every way we can. 
Uh, we have a strong cash position, which is uh, very, <laughs> very nice to have in these days, to be honest. Uh, and uh, but this also in combination with the sales growth uh, provides us with a lot of uh, flexibility going forward. Uh, and there are a lot of different pathways that we could explore. Uh, but our main objective now is actually to utilize this organization that we have and add additional products, not only the ones that we are developing in-house, but also to uh, in-license products, acquire products, or perhaps seek other partnerships or acquire products in other ways. Uh, we also have our clinical program that is uh, progressing. Uh, we're going to start uh, feasibility studies now in the near term, which we will then uh, continue into full-scale registration studies. Uh, to sum this whole thing up, uh, these are basically the five points that I would like you to remember from this presentation today. Uh, that uh, although we are a fairly small company, we, we have the complete structure of a much larger uh, company. We have the whole value chain from research and development, sales, production and distribution. Uh, and also, uh, which I'm actually very proud and happy for, is that uh, we had a quite extensive increase in production volumes uh, that came very rapidly this year. And I'm happy to say that our organization managed to, to meet that demand without any problems. And this is also very hopeful for the future as we see these demands increasing, that our internal organization will be able to, uh, to yeah, provide the products to the market. Uh, we have had a very good organic sales growth, uh, and this, uh, as I said, with a strong financial position, provides us with a lot of flexibility. We have a strong product lineup across a variety of different platforms, which we think appeal to a larger market. And we also have good or very competent external partners, not only on the sales side, but also when it comes to research and development and production. So we have the ability uh, to scale this up even more, even beyond our internal organization. And this, uh, our internal organization, this internal infrastructure, that is actually what is the foundation for us to drive this company forward. And my hope is that we will be able to include additional products uh, in this, uh, to our product portfolio going forward. Thank you for listening. Right. Yes. Oh, no, please spot, please yeah. come towards yes, the cross. Yes. Not quite like Jesus, but... No. <laughs> <laughs> do you have... Well, it's your last chance of the day to ask questions, so do you have any for Anders? So, uh, thank you for an interesting presentation. Um, given the, well, the rapid growth that you're seeing now and that you have things in place to scale up and so on, I'm just curious to know where do you see AutoCell in, say, five years from now? <laughs> well, uh, it's uh, different to, it's a bit difficult to give outlooks or forecasts when you're a listed company. Uh, but given the uh, trend that we see right now, uh, I would say an expansion definitely of the product portfolio and also, of course, a significant increase in sales. And as I, we have also actually uh, informed last week is that I mean, we see going forward we have a a quite strong uh, backlog of orders as well, so the whole trend is continuing up. But I would say a larger, uh, a larger uh, IVD company uh, that is, of course, profitable going forward as well. You mentioned the goal of becoming cash flow positive. Mm. I'm going to be a bit mean and ask you uh, when. <laughs> Yeah. Well, <laughs> when is the goal? <laughs> yeah, then we, we can't provide any information about that. But as we said, we, are, we have our plan to become cash flow profitable within the operational activities. And I mean, this is progressing according to plan. So I, I can't say more than that. But, but this is of course the goal of all companies. But we see that this is progressing in the, in the right direction. And then maybe another question you can't answer, but you mentioned um, about new products here. Could you talk a little bit about what they potentially could be? 
No, but I mean, we are working with our, our internal products, of course, and that's uh, uh, the bladder cancer test launched in new markets. Uh, we have a TK1 test for prostate as, as a plan going forward. We are also working extensively with these automatized closed platforms, which we aim to put, as I said, all our products on. Then when it comes to inline sensing products, I can't say anything more about more than that's the aim. And I think uh, given this environment right now, it, it could uh, potentially pop up opportunities where I mean relevant product could be acquired. Of course they need to be in line with what we're doing and our knowledge, but I think there are there are certainly interesting products products out there. Yeah. You have signed a lot of distribution agreements mm -hmm. um, just in this year, like you were saying, India, Zambia, Malawi, so on. How does that work Practically, do you have a representative on the ground there? Do you go there and vet the company? Well, yeah, how does it work? Actually, we, we've both signed new ones, but also we have terminated quite a lot of old agreements in the last two years in order to, to sort of optimize our distribution network. But when it comes to Africa, for instance, we have uh, partners uh, in, in well, Africa as a continent, <laughs> but we have uh, partners on site which do the vetting. Uh, when it comes to Asia, we also have have uh, people on, in place, but I mean a lot of things is done from Stockholm as well. But also we are uh, visiting our major markets in person as well. To, to, so I mean it's both through partners and ourselves, of course. Uh, I mean we were in Indonesia just a few weeks ago, and it's I mean it's a fantastic market to, to visit. A huge market, uh, huge medical lead as well. Also a major interest for other oncology tests, which could be a potential going forward. Then I think we will say thank you to Anders.